We're on our way to learning about series, but before we do that, we need to talk about sequences. So to start with, I want to give a mathematical definition of a sequence. I think most people have an idea of what we mean when we say sequence in just everyday language. But in particular, when we're going to talk about a sequence, we're going to mean a list of numbers in a given order. So in particular, that given order, if I talk about the sequence one, two, three, that's different than the sequence three, two, one. The order matters here. And the other thing I wanna introduce here is the common notation we'll use. So if we talk about our general term of our sequence as being a sub k, to indicate that I have a sequence, I'll use the curly brackets and we will indicate the values of k by putting the starting value k equals one in this case here and then the top value would be the ending value so this is similar to the the role that those played on our sigma notation when we talked about sums before to make sure this is clear let's consider some examples of sequences first of all if i have the list one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on. If I were to write this in the a sub k notation, I would first want to identify the general term. And so the pattern here seems to be that I have one over two to the k, and that will hold if k starts at the value one and because we're indicating that this list continues, I have infinitely many terms in this sequence. And again, we're gonna be focusing on sequences with infinitely many terms. So a second example, if I had two, four, uh, eight, 16, and so on. Here, the pattern seems to be of the form two to the kth power, starting with k equals one, and again, uh, going on forever. And then finally, for this example, if I had minus one, positive one, minus one, positive one, and so on, we could see this pattern as being represented as negative one to the k, where we reflect here that when k is odd, that would give us negative one, and when k is even, it would give us positive one. And again, so we could actually start this at lots of different odd values, but certainly this would be a suitable way of writing this. So once we talk about a sequence and we get used to that notation, the next thing we want to consider is defining what it means for a sequence to converge versus diverge. So we're going to say that a sequence, again, just arbitrarily a sub k, k equals one to infinity, converges if the limit as k approaches infinity of the general term a sub k, if this limit exists and is finite. Otherwise, we're gonna say that that sequence diverges. So now we're introducing this terminology. Importantly, we're going to also talk about convergence and divergence of series in a later video, and it's going to be very important to distinguish between the context in which we're referring to those terms. Am I talking about a sequence, as we'll see now, uh, as opposed to later when we talk about a series? So let's look back at the same sequences that we saw in our example above and consider whether those sequences converge or diverge. So the first one we had was with general term one over two to the k. So according to our definition, I take my a sub k, which is in this case one over two to the k, and I consider the limit as k approaches infinity. So note that here two to the k is going to grow without bound. So one over this will lead to zero. Because that limit exists and importantly is finite, we would say that this sequence converges. 
So I can say that it converges. I'll point out, we could even take it a step further to say that it converges to zero. And again, it depends on um, the context, what, what's being asked in a particular question. Sometimes it will say, determine if it converges, and if so, to what value. In this case, we'd say zero. So if we look back to our second example, I take the a sub k, which in that instance was two to the k. And again, consider the limit as k goes to infinity. Here, 2 to the k is going to grow without bound, so this will expand to infinity. So while this limit exists, it's not finite. So this would be an example of a sequence that diverges. So whenever we have divergence, that's sufficient just to simply say that it diverges, as opposed to when we talk about convergence, we might specify to what value. And then our last example was minus 1 to the k from k equals 1 to infinity. Again, in trying to determine if this converges or not, I look at the limit as k approaches infinity of minus 1 to the k. And notice this is an example where as I change the value of k, this is going to continue to oscillate between minus 1 and positive 1. So with something like that, that's exactly when we say that the limit does not exist. In order for the limit to exist, I should be able to find a single value that all of the terms eventually approach. In this case, I would always vary between minus one and one. So this is another way that we can see a sequence that diverges. And beyond this, we have a theorem that we can apply for sequences to determine convergence in certain instances. So this theorem says that if a sequence is bounded and monotonic, then it converges. So let's make sure that that statement is clear. If a sequence is bounded, much as it would sound there, that's saying that I, I know that I have both an upper bound and a lower bound that would hold for all of my a sub k's. And monotonic means that it's strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So you could think about um, a monotonic function would be something that's always trending upward or always trending downward. So we can think of the same idea with these um, discrete terms as well. So in just using this, if I had this sequence, 1 over 1 plus k being the general term as k ranges from 1 to infinity. To be clear, if I were to talk about convergence here, I could still just use our definition, which as we saw in the previous example, I could take the limit of those terms and see that that limit exists and is finite. My only purpose in putting this here is to relate it to the theorem above, but it's not necessary in this case that we use that theorem. So my a sub k here, like I said, is 1 over 1 plus k. And first of all, notice that this is strictly decreasing, right? This starts um, at 2 when k is equal to 1. And as I continue to increase the value of k, I'm adding smaller and smaller values. So I, it satisfies the, the monotonic property but also it's bounded. So the largest this can ever be is two, which happens when k is equal to one. And it's also always adding a positive number onto one. So we could bound this below by one. Uh, so in this instance, as I think about this, I can say that um, by the above theorem, this sequence must converge. Now notice that this theorem, when we use it, doesn't allow us to say what it converges to. Again, in order to do that for this particular example, I could go back and actually take the limit of those terms to show that this does in fact converge to one.